So, uh, building a miniature house is, um, it's a thing. Yeah. What's up? It's Jazz, and today we're going to talk about miniature house building. So, to start, a lot of people don't know that I am really into miniature things. I spend most of my time on Instagram looking at people making tiny food, and it's literally my happy place. So in my quest for miniature fulfillment, I came across this YouTube channel called Tiny Little Things where they build tiny little things and they make it seem so relaxing and so easy to do. Initially I was like, this seems like something I can try, you know, let's get into this thing. Then once I attempted it and saw how much work it actually was, afterwards it was more like, this is some sh it actually turned out to be way more work than I bargained for. Like I knew it would be work, but I didn't think it would be work work, more like fun work, you know? But I was at this for like two weeks. Two weeks, bruh. That's a fortnight. And on top of that, I was gonna record it for you guys, but then I was like, nah, nah. So what I am gonna do for you guys instead that's interested in building a miniature house, I'm gonna show you the three biggest wrongs I did and what you can do to make your miniature house building experience a lot more fun, a lot more relaxing, and a lot more like tiny little things building experience. Now I do highly recommend checking out Tiny Little Things' uh, YouTube page if you're interested in that kind of thing. They do have a lot of videos up of them building tiny things, mostly houses. So like I said, if you're into that, feel free to check out their page. I will link them down below in the description. So let's get into this thing, as Marty says. Okay. So good, you're still here. That means that you want to learn how to build a miniature house kit the right way from learning from my mistakes. Good for you. First things first, you're gonna have to buy yourself a miniature house kit. They're actually pretty easy to find. I found mine on Amazon. I just typed in tiny house kit into the search bar and whatever was the first one that popped up that was visually pleasing as well as reasonably priced was the thing I threw my money at the quickest. So the tiny house kit I got is from the brand Cute Bee and was just over $30 with tax. With it, you get a detailed items booklet that shows you what materials you should have and how to individually assemble each component of the house. You also get a collection of measuring sheets as a guide for things you have to individually cut, like the fabric and the paperboard. There were also several bags numbered with letters and inside of them were several small pieces that corresponded with the items booklet to show you how to assemble all of the items, of course. I ended up just organizing everything into individual Ziploc bags based on each separate component of the house. This made it a little easier for me to figure out what parts I needed for each individual component, but you can go about it in your own personal way if you like. This did make things more manageable when it came time to put it together. However, um, I learned pretty quickly that it didn't make it all the way easy in any kind of way. Organizing things in the individual bags did allow me to have everything I needed in one place at the start, but just shoving items in the bags without fully understanding where they went and how they worked really wasted a lot of time and a lot of energy. Mostly because I kept going back and forth using the measuring sheet they gave me. I didn't realize how many individual pieces needed to be cut and measured, which was a large part of the time being wasted. On top of that, my scissors were kind of old and dull and I wasn't used to the craft glue I was using. My Ziploc bag didn't hold up when it came time to put things away. I lost a lot of the smaller pieces like the beads from improper storage. So in the end, all of these factors combined made the process really frustrating for me. I would say that to right the first wrong, it's all about having awareness. Allot the proper time and the right resources to do what you need to do. Organize your space, check your supplies, make sure they're working properly beforehand because you wanna make sure they're available to you when you start. If they're old and not working properly, get new ones. Get new ones. I'm so smart. <laughs> and last but not least, clean your space when it's needed. It's harder to feel comforted in your space if you have nothing but mess everywhere. And honestly, you'll just feel better about it. Now on to the second mistake. 
I knew I was really in trouble when I started making a couch and I realized how crappy it actually looked in the end, even though I spent two hours on it. By my own general estimations, there were hundreds of tiny pieces to handle and I started to get overwhelmed after a while. This was partly due to my lack of overall prep in the beginning, but also because I had combined the component of filming on top of it, which made it a lot harder, which I don't recommend doing, unless you're tiny little things, of course. But an easy solution to this for you, it's just about having integrity in what you do. You have to focus on the structure of the thing rather than the end game, you know? And if that's a spoiler for you, then <laughs> I don't know what to tell you at this point. <laughs> Find the things you did right, the things you really loved about what you just did and harness more of that energy. You can recondo the crap out of this thing. I, myself, was very proud of some of my kitchen items I assembled as they involved a lot of small beads and papers and I was very worried about my sausage fingers getting in the way, but it turned out to be one of my favorite parts of the build, despite the sausage fingers. Not only that, but the small fridge and the toilets were my favorite parts of this whole thing. Like I said, miniature things are my guilty pleasure. So of course I enjoyed how tiny this fridge and this toilet was. I'm a recondoed all over that tiny toilet and couldn't wait to get it where it needed to be on the build. All in all, when you focus more on what you did right and what you really enjoy about your miniature house building, you can turn any crafting into a hobby and into a relaxing experience that in the end won't look like melted ice cream, you know? Now for my last mistake, let's talk about the finished product, shall we? If I'm being honest, I wasn't happy at all with what it looked like in the end. I wouldn't say at all, I would say 75% of it I wasn't happy with. Most of that is due to the fact that I am a perfectionist and I can always see the little unfinished mistakes that could have been assembled better and I can nitpick at the smallest things. I mean, needless to say, my house didn't look like tiny little things' is house and most of that was due to the fact that we were using different materials and we had a significantly different level of experience with building miniature things. But overall, I would give myself probably a C plus on the whole ordeal, which is not bad for a first timer. But when it's all said and done, even giving yourself a grade on something that's supposed to be a hobby is completely detrimental to the task at hand if you want it to be a relaxing experience. So where I failed in this last mistake was seeing it as a failure at all. At the end of the day, hobbies are something you do because you love them not because you wanna get graded on them or you're trying to be the best at them. I'm not tiny little things and I never will be. And that's the beauty of my miniature home. But I did it and I partly finished it besides the fact that I still have to get two AAA batteries to put so I can get the lights to work. But that's about it, I'm just lazy. But other than that, you know, <laughs> it was it was a cool experience. So I really say that the right, the last mistake that I made in building this miniature house is to, Love what you do and do what you love and mean what you say and don't drop the soul. So get inspired, get motivated, do a hobby and do it fully. And whether that hobby is building a miniature house or, you know, eating Tide Pods, please don't eat Tide Pods. Don't do that. I know that's old, but you know, you can never say that enough. As long as you focus on what you're doing, you have integrity and you love what you do as much as you want it to love you back, you really can't go wrong in the hobby of crafting in general. And that is how you build a miniature house the right way. <laughs> I learned that later, but in the beginning it was, oh boy, it was rough. I really hope you guys liked this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you've just subscribed or you've subscribed before but you just forgot to do it, go ahead and hit that bell notification so you can be notified of more videos like these in the future. But that's it for now. Until next time, peace and love. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.